Hello everyone and welcome to game 4 or rather the final game of day 1 of the finals between Wesley So and Magnus Carlsen in the Skilling Open and uh, before I show you game 4 I just want to show you briefly what happened in game 2 so game 1 we already saw that um, Magnus won a very nice game but this is uh, uh, sorry not this actually this uh, you've seen nothing uh, this is the the sort of ending position of game two where Wesley so had the white pieces, Magnus is black here and Wesley gave a check here, queen e3 check and Magnus either has to block the check or move the king uh, to the, uh, well, towards the queen side, king d8, queen d7, uh, king d7. However, Magnus played king to f8 here and he ran into an un uh, most unpleasant checkmating sequence uh, where Wesley played queen e8 check, sorry about that. Uh, we have uh, king to g7 and now a nice roller coaster. Uh, queen a, queen g8 check, king h6, uh, queen to h7 check, uh, king to g5 and now queen to h5 check. And then it was in this position that Magnus Carlsen resigned the game because he realized that after king moves to f4, uh, queen to f5 will be checkmate because the king and the pawn uh, cover all of the squares that the black king can go to. So it was a terrible blunder by Magnus. Uh, it was an incredible game. First Wesley was uh, uh, re really pushing it for the win. Then Magnus sort of equalized. But then Magnus no longer wanted the draw. He wanted to win the game. And then he started pushing. And then in the end where it kind of was supposed to end in a draw. Uh, Magnus blundered in this, uh, well, weird, weird position after this uh, check by Wesley. So then uh, that's uh, game two, Wes uh, Wesley equalized in game two, then Magnus was able to win in game three, it was a rather short game, Magnus uh, attacked very early on on the king side and uh, was able to, to take the win and now it's two to one in Magnus's favor, uh, he needs uh, uh, to either hold this game to a draw or win the game uh, to win the final match. So this is uh, game four, uh, Wesley is losing by one point margin, he needs a win to get back into the match, uh, so let's see what happens. Wesley with the white pieces opens with e4. Uh, we have c5 by Magnus, uh, Magnus when, whenever there is an important game he can always uh, rely on his Sicilian, he used it very um, successfully against Fabiano Caruana in the World Chess Championship match, so knight f3, knight to c6 and the d4, we have the open Sicilian, captures, captures and now knight to f6, we have knight to c3 and e5, the so called last per, uh, Sicilian or, or the Pelican or, or the Sveshnikov. Uh, so challenging the knight, uh, knight d to b5 and now d6. So this is the exact same stuff that was played in the World Chess Championship match. Knight d5 uh, going for that c7 square and now of course black trades, captures, captures. And now the two popular replies are knight b8 and knight to e7. Magnus chooses to go to b8 and here white uh, usually goes c4, a4, uh, just... Uh, uh, th these are the most popular popular replies, but here Wesley goes for queen to f3, which is not a new move, but it is a, it, it is a very sneaky idea and it's played uh, le less often. For example, in 2020, there is not a single game uh, where this move was used. So he, he uh, probably prepared it for, for Magnus this game. We have a6 by Magnus, uh, challenging this knight, and now queen to a3. So a very nice maneuver, queen f3, queen to a3, saying that, okay, if you capture this knight, then I'm going to grab your rook. Uh, and it's not uh, again. This is not a new move. There are over, there are 65 games in the database uh, from top tier players uh, that uh, reach this position. So uh, we have knight. Uh, uh, sorry, b6 by Magnus. Uh, bishop to e7 is uh, more common than b6, as you want to castle very early on. So bishop to g5 by Wesley challenging the queen offering a bishop to go for this knight to c7 check so magnus of course cannot accept it and after this we have bishop to e7 and bishop to e7 is a new move by magnus so as of move 11 we have a completely new game and bishop to e7 is not the most precise idea f6 is what is usually played in this position uh, but i i imagine wesley caught magnus uh, by surprise with this queen to f3 queen uh, queen to a3 idea so, like I said, bishop to e7 was played and now uh, Wesley just captures it. Captures and now you cannot capture with the queen because the knight captures with check and black's position is just terrible. Uh, if not uh, out outright losing. Uh, because you have a pass pawn here, you can just do pretty much anything. There's not, not a good reply here uh, for, for black. So instead we have king captures on e7, now the d6 pawn is guarded twice so everything is fine. And now queen side castle by Wesley. Uh, bishop to b7, the knight still cannot be captured because the rook is hanging, so bishop to b7 defends the rook uh, and attacks the pawn, so now the knight can be captured, and only now Wesley moves it back. Knight to c3, and now knight to d7. Magnus is now ready to bring the knight into the game via c5 or f6 squares. 
uh, and f4 by Wesley. Uh, Carlson's king is still in the center of the board and of course he wants to bust open the position. And here Magnus plays the very calm queen to c7 just keeping an eye on the center and uh, connecting rooks. At some point uh, if he's able he wants to play uh, well uh, get the rook into the game and hopefully get the king to safety. Uh, but uh, he, he cannot do it just yet because if uh, this pawn is not uh, guarded then you, you will never be able to move it. So queen c7 also guards the d6 pawn and now f captures on e5. We have knight captures on e5 uh, and now queen to b4. Queen to b4 a very tricky idea by Wesley saying okay if you go rook h to e8 and castle I'm just going to deliver check uh, queen h4 check and I'm going to pick up the h7 pawn and it's going to be a terrible position for black. So after queen b4, we have uh, h5 by Magnus saying, okay, I'm, I'm probably not castling this game. I might as well uh, grab some space on the king's side. We have bishop to e2 and now king to f8. This is how Magnus brings his king back to safety. Uh, rook h to f1. Uh, just lining up the, the rook with, with the king on the f file. We have rook to e8. Magnus brings the queen side rook into the game and now rook to f5. Uh, putting uh, pressure on this h5 pawn so Magnus pushes it we have h4 and now rook to f4 again with a double attack on the pawn here so queen to d8 uh, defending this pawn and now this queen is uh, in, in a terrible position the queen has to guard this pawn has to guard this pawn has to guard this pawn it's not a, not a very pleasant job for the queen so here uh, Wesley doesn't rush it with something like rook d to f1 instead he plays the nice prophylactic king b1 as it's always uh, nice to have a safe king and he says you you don't really have a move here Magnus I, I can play whatever I want so here rook to h6 this is how Magnus activates the rook now also adds a defender to the d6 pawn and it's going to be a, a bit easier to play and Wesley doesn't double up on the f file which seems like a reasonable thing to do rather he plays rook d to d4 and uh, you, uh, as some, someone mentioned, I don't know where, uh, he points the idea in his gun in, in, uh, in the wrong direction. Now he's going after the h4 pawn and now uh, Magnus pushes it to the h3. So of course he's hoping for a captures captures uh, to, to gain some activity along the h file. Uh, but Wesley just says, nope, g3. And the next I might play something like this. And uh, well, I, I will win that pawn at some point. So here, bishop to c8, Magnus defends it, not, not allowing any such ideas and a4 now. Uh, it's uh, remarkable how it's a pretty crazy position but Wesley finds time to play such uh, you know uh, just improving his position moves. King to g8 getting the king away from the from the f file and now comes rook d to e4. And uh, what do you play now? If you move the knight then Wesley can just capture. You have to capture and then your entire position falls apart. Uh, not that one obviously. Uh, and here Magnus played queen to c7. So Again, what, what do you play here? Uh, here Wesley played rook to h4, which was the original idea, threatening the rook and then the other rook can come up uh, to the game and gobble up the pawn. So here we have a5 challenging Wesley's queen and the queen to d4. Uh, centralizing the queen, but not, not really... Uh, f for the moment, uh, the queen doesn't really have all that much to do here, uh, but Magnus has to react to this. And uh, you, you don't really have a good move other than capturing the rook. You can't really allow captures to mess up your uh, king side. So rook captures on h4, we have rook captures on h4, and now comes bishop to f5 by Magnus, putting pressure uh, on the c2 pawn if the knight ever moves. There was a very sneaky queen to c5 idea. Um, uh, si similar to the to the queen move that Nepo had against Magnus, you offer a queen trade and uh, then the queen trade uh, either should be accepted or if Wesley moves the queen, then you you can infiltrate, for example, with queen to f2, and now it's uh, it's uh, a little bit easier to play this. Uh, but okay, Magnus went went for uh, bishop to f5. He puts pressure on this pawn here, and now Wesley goes rook to h5, challenges the bishop. And now you don't really have a good square for the bishop. You could go just bishop g6, then just rook captures on h3 as the bishop no longer defends it. Uh, or you could go back. You can't go here, you can't go here. This is all defended twice. Uh, you could go something like here, but then you're going to have to give up the bishop either way. Because after knight b5, the bishop uh, has to be uh, traded for knight here. Because if you don't, if you move the queen to kind of keep an eye on everything then g4 uh, and then the dh3 the pawn is again no longer defended you're just going to capture it and it's going to be a, a very very good position for white so instead after this uh, rook to h5 move we have queen to c8 by magnus defends the bishop uh, but now queen captures on b6 and here uh, why did magnus give up a pawn here well he decided to go knight to g4 so he 
basically said to Wesley, you cannot capture that pawn because it's defended by a tactic. Now your bishop is under attack and, uh, well, if I capture the bishop, for example, if Wesley plays something like queen captures on a5, Magnus would just capture the bishop. And after the knight captures, now the queen can finally capture here. And then it's uh, either uh, a win for Magnus if Wesley plays something weird like king day one and allows checkmate. Or if king a2, then Magnus would have a, a, a draw by perpetual. For example, queen a1 check. You don't want to go too much up the board. So king to b3. Again, queen d1 check, king a2. And of course, not capturing, uh, but rather just going queen to b1 check and repeating everything. Because Magnus only needs a draw to win this, uh, to win this match. Uh, but this is what Magnus thought would happen. However, there's a very sneaky idea here, so feel free to pause the video and find the winning move for Wesley uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on uh, combining combining the two ideas. This is this is being threatened. You need to move it with tempo. Uh, so uh, bishop to a6. Congratulations for all of you who found it. Uh, as it's uh, well, not not all that straightforward to move to find. So the queen is under attack, and now you're asking uh, Magnus, what do you want to do here? Your queen is under attack, but still needs to guard the bishop here. And the problem is, uh, the problem is, if you move the queen somewhere like a queen to d7, then the problem is bishop to b5. And now the queen and rook are under attack, and after the queen moves, uh, for example, here you're either you're gonna capture the rook. Uh, and if not, if you go for something like queen to d8 to attack white's queen, then white very happily trades, and after rook captures on f5, uh, white is just uh, up a piece, and it's a very easy victory. So this is not possible here. Uh, so after this uh, bishop to a6 move, uh, we have uh, rook to e1 with check. This is how Magnus tries to avoid this. Uh, we have king to a2, and now comes queen to e8. Uh, the problem with queen to d7 now, keeping an eye on the bishop, is the very unpleasant rook captures on f5. It's just uh, complete domination. Queen captures on f5, and now queen to d8 with check. And now you don't have a move here, uh, because you can either give up the rook, and it's the same scenario, or you can move the king, and then bishop goes back to d3 and wins Carlsen's queen. So terrible, terrible position for Magnus. He decides to go queen to e8, gives up the dark square bishop, and here Wesley just happily gobbles it up. Rook captures on f5, and here Magnus is just down a piece in a worse position, and uh, he, of course, will will still continue playing it. Knight to e3, attacks the rook here, but now bishop to b5. Wesley first challenges Magnus's queen. Queen to e7, and when Magnus played queen to e7, it was also in this position that Magnus Carlsen resigned the game because there is nothing more to be done here, uh, and uh, th there are simply any move Wesley plays is just completely winning. You just move the rook anywhere, and th the position is still winning. However, we can show uh, a, a sneaky line, for example, if rook h5, uh, cutting the king off from, from escaping anywhere, and now if black plays, uh, l let's say, a, a lesser move, knight captures on c2, then queen to b8 is winning immediately. Uh, because after you block it, of course, you cannot block with this because the bishop covers it. And if, let's say if queen f8, then just rook h8 check, and this is just completely winning for white. So yeah, uh, really, really wild stuff. Wesley gets back into the game in a must-win situation. So he was losing by, by a point uh, going into game four, and now he won on demand. So this is pretty incredible. And here is something funny for you to see. Uh, there you can see that uh, the players, <laughs> every, uh, every game was won by... Uh, the player playing with the white pieces so uh pretty crazy so not a single draw in this match and we can only hope that uh, the second match will be uh, ju just as uh, you know uh, feisty uh so yeah uh, that's uh, the game uh, i do hope you guys enjoyed it uh and uh, i would like to thank uh, Aiden green uh, slobodan Verkacevic, girt sears uh, thomas jones and hoodie guy for your contribution to my channel thank you a lot i really appreciate it as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing the coverage uh, of the Skilling Open, the finals, the last day of the finals, checking up on your wonderful suggestions and whatever else happens in the chess world. Thank you all. Uh, I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.